Hello students, how are you all? From Akash Gupta again and today uh, I have come up with a new, uh, very ignored topic of 12th class which is polarization. It is actually under the head of wave optics and, and obviously it is related to light. So, uh, polarization is actually a very special effect that light gives. So, let me show you a little experiment and then we will start understanding what is polarization. Okay. So, suppose I have this lens. Can you see that I have this lens, lens of a pair of glasses and uh, if you see this, these lens and if you see these words through this lens, can you see the white letters are quite visible. The white letters are quite visible because of a reddish tint in the glasses. They are looking a little reddish, but you can see these letters behind these lenses. But if I turn this lens, by an angle 90 degree. Can you see? Now you cannot see the white color of the sorry of the letters. So why this effect occurs? Why in this fashion, in this manner, you can see, you can see the lenses behave as if they are transparent, and in this way, when you turn them by 90 degrees, they look opaque. We will learn here in this chapter. So, let us begin. So, now we will understand the concept. Okay. Suppose we have a single photon of light. What is a photon? You all know that light is actually a stream of fast moving tiny sized particles and these particles are photons. So, suppose imagine hypothetically I have a single photon traveling in this direction. So, this is the direction of travel of photon and as you know, do you know the electric, the light is actually electromagnetic wave. So, when light travels in a certain direction, electric field and magnetic field vibrates in perpendicular direction. So, if light or the photon is traveling towards right, there will be electric field oscillating perpendicular to direction of travel. So, in this direction, the electric field is oscillating. And also perpendicular to this electric field and also perpendicular to light's travel, we have magnetic field. So, we have magnetic field oscillating in this horizontal direction as electric field is oscillating in vertical direction. Do you understand? Okay. So, actually the properties of light mainly depends upon electric field. So, I am showing only electric field vectors in our examples. So, let us redraw this diagram here. Here what I have shown? Please imagine the light photon is coming towards you. The light photon is coming towards you like this. Okay. And if light photon is coming perpendicular to this, this screen towards you, this represents the uh, electric field vibration in vertical plane or in y direction. You can say this is electric fields uh, y component. There will be also magnetic field oscillating horizontally, but we are ignoring magnetic field. Okay, But you should uh, remember there exists magnetic field. We are just not showing it. Okay, So, this was the story of a single photon. Okay, But if you imagine a thinnest ray of light, it will contain enormously huge number of photons in it. Okay, okay. So, please try to imagine a thin light ray coming towards you. What may happen here? Some of the electrons, some of the photons electric field may vibrate in vertical plane, but few uh, photons electric field may oscillate in horizontal plane. Some of the photons electric field may oscillate in this direction and some of the elect photons electric field may oscillate in this direction. Here, we imagined only a single photon, so we had only one electric field oscillating in vertical direction. But as the ray of light contains huge number of photons, the electric field vibrations will be in all possible directions. So, that is the concept of actually unpolarized light. Okay. What is actually the unpolarized light? So, actually the unpolarized light, in unpolarized light, the vibrations of electric vector are symmetrical, are symmetrical in all possible directions, in all possible directions, perpendicular to direction of propagation of light. So, let us see again, the light is coming perpendicular to the screen. Please imagine this dot as 
the direction of travel of light and we have electric field vectors symmetrically distributed in all possible directions perpendicular to light's travel and this represents unpolarized light. Actually, there are other ways in which we can represent an unpolarized light. Let us learn them too. So, what we can do, leave the uh, light components which are in y and x direction and break all other components in two direction, x and y. So, if you just break all other components which are not in x and y direction and make their components in x and y direction, because of symmetry, we can say we will left with only two components, one electric fields x component and one electric fields y component. It is actually a resulting diagram of this. What we have done, we have made components of each electric vector in x and y direction. Ex represents the sum of components of all electric vectors in x direction and ey represents some of electric fields uh, some of uh, components uh, of all electric vectors in y direction so ex and ey represents net field in x and y direction okay and this is again a representation of unpolarized light purely unpolarized light if ex and ey are same obviously it is a result of symmetrical nature okay so it is also unpolarized light okay unpolarized light is also called ordinary light why ordinary light because the tube light uh, emits unpolarized light the light bulb emits unpolarized light the stars the sun emit unpolarized light so the all the sources that we find in nature they emit unpolarized light okay there is one more way of showing unpolarized light okay see here in this diagram, I have shown direction of travel, the direction of light travel, not perpendicular to the screen, but in the plane of the screen towards right. So, if light is traveling in this direction, we have shown electric fields Y component by these vertical arrows, but there will be electric fields X component. So, these dots represent actually the electric field x component. So, electric field x component is oscillating in this direction, in the perpendicular direction of the screen like this. Electric field x component are vibrating in this direction and these dots represent electric fields x component. So, it is just the same diagram as this. Actually, this is the top view of this diagram okay this is the side view you can you understood so these vertical arrows shows the electric fields y component and these dots show electric fields x component as it has both ey and ex components ey and ex component this is also an unpolarized or ordinary light okay so that is the main concept of order uh, ordinary or unpolarized light now let us learn what is a polarized light okay what is a polarized light? So, let me tell you what is a polarized light. If the electric field of every photon vibrates in a single plane, if electric field of every photon of light ray or light wave vibrate in a single plane in a single direction, then we say the light is completely polarized or plane polarized. Okay, let me show you. Okay, suppose the light is traveling towards right means in x direction and there is electric fields y component. Can you see that? The, these are electric fields y component and the dots are missing. If the dots are missing, it means electric fields x component are missing. So, we have the electric field vibrating in a single vertical plane. And if all photons have their electric field vibrating in a single vertical plane, this light is, you can say, it's, it's vertically polarized. So, this is the example of polarized light. It says, a, uh, in plane polarized light, vibration uh, uh, of electric vector are restricted only a single direction or in, or in a single plane. That is the concept of polarized light. Okay. If a light has only x component of electric field, it doesn't have 
y component of electric field it it has only x component of electric field this is also polarized it is polarized in horizontal plane and it is polarized in vertical plane it only has y component of electric field it only has x component of electric field okay and this is the travel the travel direction of light so actually we have now the polarized light uh, and here i have shown you the concept of unpolarized light so what is this term which we call polarization so in many applications of science we need polarized light even this screen is emitting only polarized light you cannot judge it is polarized because our eyes cannot distinguish between a polarized and an unpolarized light we cannot distinguish it okay but an act of converting ordinary or unpolarized light into polarized light is called polarization so what is polarization just if you have a method of converting unpolarized light into polarized light this method of uh, converting uh, light is called polarization and uh, there are few methods of polarization two are very important uh, as for your exams are concerned two methods are very important and i'm discussing the two and you will surely find questions on these two methods in your exams okay so the first method is actually polarization by reflection we see a very you can say very astonishing or you can say very strange result that when a not a ordinary light an ordinary light or an unpolarized light is incident on a boundary of two media on a boundary of two transparent media mu and mu two are the refractive indices of these two media this is the boundary and this incident light is completely polarized completely sorry completely unpolarized means it is an ordinary light so if light is being incident in this plane of the screen this is the normal and these this this represents reflected ray and this represents transmitted or refracted ray you can say this screen is actually the plane of incidence the plane of incidence and see i have what i have done i have uh, made component of electric field vectors in two direction one along the plane of incidence and one perpendicular to the plane of incidence so these dots represent electric field components perpendicular to plane of incidence and these arrows represent the electric field component in the plane of incidence and as this is a, a unpolarized ordinary light both these components in the plane of incidence and perpendicular to the plane of incidence both component of electric field are equal but we see very strange result when the light is reflected and refracted in reflected part of the light in reflected part of the light we see less number of components in the plane of incidence so you can say this light is partially polarized here we have more components perpendicular to the plane of incidence can you see here we have 1 2 3 4 5 6 6 7 dot dots and dots represents the electric field component perpendicular to plane of incidence and these arrows represents the electric field component in the plane of incidence and you see we have more dots than arrows means the light the light the electric field vectors perpendicular to the plane of incidence are strongly reflected but electric field components in the plane of incidence are weakly reflected so here we have you can say if we say this as ey and this dots as ex ex we have ex more than ey so i we can say this light is partially polarized this light is partially polarized
and this too, this too is partially polarized. What we see, we see more arrows than dots here. So, what we observe in nature that in transmitted or refracted ray, the light, the electric vectors in the plane of uh, 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 in the plane of incidence are refracted most. Okay, and the light, uh, the electric vectors perpendicular to the plane of incidence are weakly refracted. So here we have the more electric vectors in the plane of incidence. So this is also partially polarized. This is also partially polarized and it is also partially polarized. And if we vary this angle of incidence, there was a scientist called Brewster. Brewster found a very amazing result. And what he observed, he observed if somehow in a particular situation, the reflected ray and the refracted ray, which were almost partially polarized, but if the reflected and refracted ray are normal to each other, we observe that the reflected ray is completely polarized, completely plane polarized. But if they are perpendicular to each other, why this is happening? It is not told in this class, in this 12th class, but this is observed. This is an observed phenomenon that when reflected and refracted ray, here too, when reflected and refracted ray are perpendicular to each other, are normal to each other, we see the reflected ray is perfectly polarized. And we also observe that for any angle of incidence, for any angle of incidence, the refracted ray cannot be completely polarized. So, only reflected ray can be completely polarized. And when this happens, when the reflected and refracted ray are perpendicular to each other. And, and, and the angle of incidence at which this occurs, the reflected light is completely, completely polarized. This angle of incidence is called polarizing angle or Brewster angle. So, let us learn Brewster law. Okay. Theta B. Theta B is called Brewster angle or polarizing angle. Or polarizing angle. Okay. And what happens when angle of incidence is equal to Brewster angle, remember one point, one very important point, when the angle of incidence is equal to Brewster angle, the refracted ray and the reflected ray are perpendicular to each other and reflected ray is completely polarized. It is completely polarized. The incident ray is unpolarized, but the reflected ray is polarized. So, somehow we have managed to uh, to find a way to uh, polarize a light. So, this is the method of the first method of polarization. Okay. So, let us do some mathematics here. Okay. As you know, the angle of incidence and angle of reflection are same. These both are theta b. These both are Brewster angle. And as this angle is 90, in no time you will see this angle is 90 minus theta b. 90 minus theta p. And if we apply Snell's law here, Snell's law here, the Snell's law says mu1, mu1 means the refractive index in which we have incident ray. Mu1 sine of incident angle which is theta b equals mu2 times sine of uh, angle of refraction which is 90 minus theta b, 90 minus theta b. And sin 90 minus theta b is simply mu2 cos theta b. If you bring cos theta b here, you have tan theta b equals to mu2 by mu1. So, that is the concept of Brewster angle. The mu2 by mu1 can also be written as refractive index of medium 2 with respect to uh, medium 1. So, this is called 
Brewster angle and tan of Brewster angle is actually the refractive index of medium 2 with respect to medium 1. Okay, So, that is the first method of polarization and in this method we have learned if angle, if light ray is incident at a certain angle given by this relation, the reflected will be, the reflected ray will be completely polarized in the perpendicular plane of incidence. So, this is the plane of incidence, but the reflected uh, light will have electric field vectors perpendicular to this plane of incidence or this plane of screen. So, that is the first method. Let us learn the second method. Now, we will learn the second method of polarization and which is polarization by polaroids. What are polaroids? Actually, polaroids are special crystals. Actually, the lenses I showed you in the beginning of this uh, lecture, uh, this, these lenses are also polaroids. So, these polaroids are actually made by, made of special hydrocarbon chains. Okay, these crystals are made of uh, special hydrocarbon chains and they have a property of selective absorption. So, suppose we have this crystal and on this crystal, this light is incident. This light is incident. Can you see that? This light has two components of electric field vector, one in this direction and one perpendicular to it. So, the perpendicular component is shown by this dot and one component is shown by the arrow. You can call this as EX or this as EY. Initially, EY and EX both are equal as the incident light is unpolarized or ordinary light. When, when, but when the light passes through this crystal, this crystal has an amazing property that it, it never, it does not touch the one component of the two. So, can you see the dot component of electric field is unaffected, but the arrow component of electric field is decreasing to almost zero and the when light is emitted from this uh, crystal or you can say the when light is, when light emerges from this crystal, it only has one component of light in it which is shown by this dot. So, what it does? it actually absorbs one component of light and let pass the other component of light and makes the unpolarized light polarized light. Okay. So, that is the uh, property of selective absorption. It selects only one component of light and lets the other component pass through it. Okay. So, uh, in diagrams, the polarites are shown by these uh, circles. The lines, the linings in the polaroids actually show the pass axis or transmission axis, transmission axis or pass axis. This axis says when you throw light on it, the electric field vector parallel to pass axis will be transmitted, but electric field vector perpendicular to the pass axis will not be transmitted. The electric field vector perpendicular to the pass axis will be absorbed by the polaroids and through this polaroid we get polarized light. But remember, if we have component say EY here and EX here, both almost equal. So, let us say both are E. Both are E. So, if both EX and EY are E, the resultant amplitude here in unpolarized light would be actually E root 2. But as one component is missing here, one component is missing here, we will have only one component left. So, remember one thing, the incident light has net electric field amplitude as E root 2 and the passed light or transmitted light, the transmitted polarized light has only uh, one component of electric field as E. So, can you see the electric field's amplitude is decreasing? The electric field is, the electric field's amplitude is decreasing by a factor of 1 by 2. And as intensity, as intensity is proportional to amplitude square, the intensity also decreases. 
so 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 it's very simple actually if we have incident intensity let me show it by yellow light if we have incident intensity as i not as the amplitude is being reduced by a factor of root 2 and intensity is proportional to a square of amplitude the intensity will reduce by a factor of 1 by 2 so if i not is the incident intensity on a polaroid the emitted intensity will be only i not by 2 and emitted light is plain polarized so, so remember these two points if we send an ordinary light through a polaroid it simply reduces intensity by half and amplitude by obviously 1 by root 2 and it lets only polarized light pass through it and the pol the light is polarized parallel to the pass axis so i have shown the summary here the light incident on the polaroid is suppose unpolarized it has both electric vectors and intensity as i not but when light passes through it okay when light passes through a polaroid and its pass axis is shown by this vertical line the electric vector parallel to pass axis will be transmitted and the electric vector perpendicular to the pass axis will be absorbed and we have intensity i naught by 2 here that is the main idea of polarization by polaroid always remember this point okay we also have a very interesting uh, law here uh, with polaroids and that law is Malus law. Let us understand what is Malus law. So, suppose we have an unpolarized light. This is electric field's y component, this is electric field x component and both are equal to E. So, it is an unpolarized light. But when light passes through a polarizer, when light passes through a polarizer, and its pass axis is parallel to y axis what happens one component is being transmitted so only e y is transmitted here the e y is transmitted we can call e y as e only and the transmitted intensity is only i naught by 2 you can call this i naught by 2 is i 1 and uh, just notice this fact uh, as this is the polarized light if I place another polarizer in the path of this polarized light, now this polarizer is called analyzer. I will uh, tell you shortly why we call it analyzer, but this is exactly same as this polarizer, okay, and it is called analyzer. If the pass axis of the two polaroids are parallel, what happen what will happen if the pass axis are parallel it will simply transmit this vector on the right hand side and here too we will get intensity equals to i1 which is i0 by 2 but if if we turn the pass axis of the analyzer by an angle theta let us see what happens we have electric field vector ey equals to e here and the E is parallel to this dotted line. But the pass axis is at an angle theta with the previous position. So, what happens? We can make two components of electric field. One parallel to the new pass axis. It is E cos theta. And one perpendicular to the new pass axis which will be E sin theta. And what the new polarizer or analyzer will do? It will let e cos theta pass through the analyzer. So, we will have only e cos theta here, e cos theta here and e sin theta which is perpendicular to the uh, pass axis will be absorbed by the polarizer. So, we have e cos theta here and as the amplitude is improved by a factor of cos theta the intensity would improve by a factor of cos square theta because intensity is proportional to square of the amplitude and that is why the intensity here 
would be I2 and that I2 is given by the intensity here I1 times cos square theta because the electric field vector is being improved by, uh, improved by a factor of cos theta. The intensity is being improved or in fact uh, uh, will be decreased actually but I am saying the intensity will improve by a factor of cos square theta. Cos square theta is definitely less than 1 so I2 would be obviously less than I1. Okay. So, in this way actually we will have a reduced intensity, the first point. But we have a different plane of polarization. So, if in some manner, if in some way, in some experiment, you want to turn the angle of polarization of light, which is vertical here, in y direction here, but if you want to turn the angle of polarization or a plane of polarization by an angle theta, just pass through an analyzer and make sure the angle between pass axis of analyzer and the first polarizer, they should make an angle theta with respect to each other. And you will have your electric fields turned by an angle theta. Okay. So, this way we can turn the electric field vectors. And uh, remember the intensity is actually, what is intensity? Intensity is uh, I1 cos square theta. So, always remember one point, when we pass unpolarized light through a polarizer, we get half intensity, okay. And remember this light is polarized. So, when a po already polarized light is passed through a, another polarizer or called analyzer, we have this new intensity I2 equals to I1 cos square theta. So, if these two are parallel, if these two are parallel, means pass axis are parallel, let me draw I2 versus theta. If theta is 0, means theta 0 means the pass axis of analyzer and pass axis of polarizer are parallel. We have I2 equal to I1. We have I2 equal to I1. But as we start rotating this, analyzer, you know the graph of cos square theta, it decreases. So, I2 also decreases and at theta equals to pi by 2, we get no intensity. We get no intensity. Okay. Let us, let us see this experiment using those glasses. Okay. Let us see this. Okay. So, uh, in this, uh, time, this time I will turn only one. So, you can assume this first lens as polarizer and the second lens as analyzer and this way, this way the pass axis are parallel to each other and can you see this? Okay. This is the white portion. And let us see this white portion through this polaroid. I think the white portion is visible. Okay. But I am, what I am doing, I am separating these two and I am uh, keeping one polaroid. I am keeping one polaroid fixed and I am turning the other polaroid. See carefully. If I am turning the other polaroid, can you see the intensity decreasing? Can you see the intensity decreasing? And when I turn the other pole right by almost 90 degrees, the intensity is reduced. Intensity is greatly reduced. So, at 90 degrees, we have the minimum intensity. And when you turn the angle uh, more than 90 degree, the intensity will again increase. And the intensity will go on varying like this. If you keep on rotating the analyzer like this. Okay. So, that is the concept of pol uh, polarization by polaroids. Okay. So, now let us solve few questions okay, based on this concept and uh, strengthen our understanding. Okay. Now, let us look at our first problem and uh, let us read it. Uh, here we have an unpolarized light travels through two linear polarizers. Okay. So, we have two polarizers. 
and one unpolarized light is going through these two linear polarizers okay they are saying what minimum angle should the second polarizer be relative to the first polarizer means the first polarizer's pass axis is like this and the second polarizer's pass angle is like this and there is some angle between them theta so they are asking us the value of theta the minimum value of theta okay because theta is actually the relative position of the second polarizer's pass axis with respect to the first polarizer's pass axis and what they do they are saying uh, the final intensity of light is the 3 by eighth times of the original value so if the incident intensity i naught is i naught let the incident intensity is i naught the final light has intensity 3 by 8 i naught okay so let us apply the laws uh, the, uh, the the knowledge that we have learned the first polarizer will simply make the light polarized and the intensity after the first polarizer will be i naught by 2 but according to malus law as the second polarizer is turned by angle theta the intensity here would be equal to cos square theta times the intensity here so this intensity the final intensity is actually i naught cos square theta i naught by 2 cos square by theta so i forgot to write i naught by 2 because after the first polarizer intensity will be halved okay so let me write final intensity as i naught by 2 cos square theta and uh, as the value is equal to 3 by 8 times of i naught let's cancel this i naught and you will simply see the cos theta is actually plus minus root 3 by 2 and if cos theta is actually plus minus root 3 by 2 uh, you know uh, by mathematics the minimum angle the minimum value of theta would be simply pi by 6 so obviously the minimum angle is pi by 6 and the option b is correct okay let's see the next question okay so in next question they say we have three polaroids we have three polaroids and they are kept coaxially they are kept coaxially we have three polaroids yes they are saying the angle between the pass axis actually the angle between first and last polaroid is 90 degrees means the first polaroid and the last polaroid are 90 degree turned with respect to each other okay and angle between the first and second polaroid is 60 degree so if we draw a dotted line that represents orientation of first polaroid the angle of second polaroid is actually 60 degree with respect to first now they are asking if the incident intensity is i naught if the incident intensity is i naught then what is the intensity or energy being emerging being uh, emerging from this system so if incident intensity is i naught i naught after first polarizer the intensity we will get as i naught by 2 but as the second polarizer it is at angle 60 degree with respect to first we will have intensity i1 here and according to malus law the i1 should be i naught by 2 cos square 60 okay according to malus law okay and since since this pass axis is at 60 degree with respect to the original pass axis of first polaroid the second the third the third pass axis will be simply at 30 degree angle with respect to second one isn't this obvious because this is turned by 60 degree and this is turned by 90 degree with respect to first so obviously the angle uh, between this pass axis and this pass axis would be 30 degree right so if we have the final intensity as i2 we have i2 as i1 cos square 30 degree okay i1 
cos squared 30 degree again by Malus law. So, I to the final intensity becomes, we can put the value of I1 from this uh, equation, we have I1 as I0 by 2, cos squared 60, as cos 60 is 1 by 2, cos squared 60 is 1 by 4 and this is the value of I1 and cos square 30, cos 30 is root 3 by 2, so cos square 30 is actually 3 by 4, so we have 3 I naught divided by 32 as an answer. So, final intensity is actually 3 I naught by 32 and our right option is option number 2. Okay, next question. Now, we have a beam of natural light. A beam of natural light falls on a system of 6 polaroids. Now, we have 6 polaroids. Yes, we have 6 polaroids and which are arranged in succession such that each polaroid is turned through an angle 30 degree with respect to preceding one. So, you can see the angle between this axis and this axis is 30 degree. Angle between this axis and this axis is again 30 degree. So, every polarizer, every polaroid is turned by 30 degree with respect to the preceding one. As you know, if we have intensity here as I naught, after first polaroid, after first polaroid, we will have intensity as I naught by 2. But after second, we have intensity as after second, after second we have intensity as I naught by 2 cos square 30, cos square 30. But if we cross the third one, we have one more cos square 30 multiplied, so we have cos square 30 to power 2. This is the intensity after third polarizer, but after fourth, as fourth is further turned by 30 degree, we have after fourth, we have one more cos square 30 multiplied, so we have power 3. After fifth, we have power 4 and after five, after sixth, I must say, after sixth, we have the power 5 here. Okay. So, let me correct. After all these 6 polarizers, the final intensity would be I naught by 2. I naught by 2 is made by the first polarizer and after then, after then each polarizer contributes a term cos square 30. So, uh, if we have 5 cos square 30 multiplied with each other, we have this as final intensity final intensity okay as cos 30 as cos 30 is equal to actually root 3 by 2 cos square 30 is 3 by 4 okay so we have i naught by 2 and 3 by 4 to the power 5 and if you calculate this you will have 0 0.12 times of i naught as the final answer so, if the final intensity is only 0.12 times of I naught, the final intensity in percentage will be only 12% of the incident intensity. So, this option 4 is your perfect answer. Okay. So, let us see what we have in the next question. So, here, here we see a beam of light it strikes a piece of a glass at an angle of incidence 60 degrees. So, we have a glass and a piece of light, a light ray in fact, it strikes the glass surface at an angle of 60 degree. Okay. Now, they say the reflected beam is completely plane polarized. The reflected beam is plane polarized. And they are asking us what is refractive index of the glass. So, I have assumed the refractive index of glass as n, the refractive index of air as usually it is 1 and let us apply the Brewster law. You know the light, the reflected light is plane polarized only if the refracted ray and reflected ray are perpendicular to each other. So, if these two rays are perpendicular to each other, 
you know this angle as 60 degree because it follows law of reflection angle of incidence same as angle of reflection so if this is 60 this is 90 this must be 30 because the sum of these three must be 180 and if you apply the Snell's law at this surface you will have uh, mu 1 as 1 sine 60 equals to mu 2 as n sine 30. You have n equals to sine 60 by sine 30 and that will be actually root 2. Oh, sorry, it will be root 3. So, obviously, the refractive index of glass is root 3 and this is your answer. Let us move to the next question. Okay. So, this question says, Again, try this question yourself and then uh, see the solution. This question says the angle of polarization for any medium is 60 degree. Angle of polarization is also called Brewster angle and you know the Brewster angle tan theta b is actually equal to the uh, refractive index of medium. Obviously, we are assuming above the medium we have air. Okay. So, the tan theta v is equal to refractive index of the medium, right? Okay. As the tan theta b, theta b is 60 degree according to question. So, if we put theta b as 60 degree, tan 60 degree will be equal to root 3 and that is equal to n, right? Now, they are asking us, what is the critical angle? What is the critical angle for this situation? So, as we already know, the, if the critical angle is theta c, the sine of theta c is given by 1 by refractive index, right? 1 by refractive index. And if you put the value of refractive index as root 3, we have refractive index as root 3. The critical angle will be simply the sine inverse 1 by root 3 and if you look at options, option number 4 is your correct choice. So, I hope you understood the uh, methods of polarization. Uh, I wish you all the best for your second attempt and for your need. Thank you. Thank you very much.